This other funerary stele depicts Prince Nebsenet, who lived 1,500 years before Christ. It comes from Thebes. The prince and his wife received the homage of their three sons, while a harpist, a singer of the god Amon, depicted below, plucks the strings of her instrument with agile fingers. The headless statue of the nobleman Uja Horezne is the most important historical document in the museum. The hieroglyphic inscriptions covering his gown recount the life of this priest, who was also a physician and an admiral, and who lived around 525 BC at the time of Cambyses, the Persian king who conquered Egypt. According to the inscription, this king held our personage in high esteem, and the two Persian bracelets with lion's heads on the statue's wrists undoubtedly refer to a gift from the king. This large scarab is a document of rare and unique interest. It commemorates the excavation of a huge artificial lake in the middle of the desert near the palace of Malgata, ordered by Pharaoh Amenophis III, who had it dug for his wife Tiyi in 1380 BC so she could go sailing on it. The attention the Egyptians constantly accorded the deceased is well known. Such attention was based on the idea that the spirit, while it did leave the body, couldn't survive its decomposition, so indissoluble was the link between the two. This explains the care taken to maintain the corpse for as long as possible, using elaborate mummification techniques and encasing the body within inaccessible tombs. The Egyptians believed it was the god Anubis with his dog's head who guided the deceased along the road of the netherworld. This work, which dates back to some time between the first and second centuries, was preserved in an Egyptian sanctuary in Actium and depicts the god holding the sistrum, or characteristic bronze rattle, in his right hand and in his left the caduceus of Hermes, indicating his role as guide of souls. This painted sarcophagus comes from Thebes and dates back to the first millennium before Christ. The complexity and richness of the scenes depicted is stunning. Mythological figures, spirits of the netherworld, symbolic evocations accompany the deceased and his family while they enjoy the privileges of eternal life. Of special interest is this papyrus of the Book of the Dead, the indispensable guide to the afterlife, as well as the ornaments and jewels that adorned a mummy. After the mummification process, the internal organs of the deceased were placed inside jars called konopi, which were sealed with sculpted heads representing divinities. Quite commonly, 365 small statues called Ushebti were placed alongside the corpse. 
The statues, one for every day of the year, took turns in taking the place of the deceased in fulfilling all the tasks expected of him in the afterlife. Tasks thought to be similar to those accomplished on earth. That is why the dead were buried together with the objects they used in their everyday lives. Caskets, mirrors, sandals, some bread for the long voyage, and a few grains for sowing. The history of Egypt is intricately tied to the history of the river that runs through it, the Nile, whose floodwaters regularly spread a layer of silt over the land, making the soil especially fertile. This painted terracotta tile comes from the church of Santa Sabina in Rome and shows how the Romans imagined the landscape around the great river. The black stone from which this other colossal image of the Nile is taken refers to the dark color of the silt. This statue was sculpted in Rome by an Egyptian during the first century AD. Water could be poured from its mouth in another reference to the Nile, and it was probably used for religious purposes. The most spectacular reconstruction of Egypt, linked to the flooding of the Nile, was created by the Emperor Hadrian during the first half of the second century at his villa in Tivoli, near Rome. In the area known as the Canopus, architecturally speaking still the best preserved, he had reproduced a kind of monumental map of Egypt, immersed beneath the floodwaters of the Nile. The Vatican Museum contains several statues from the Canopus of Hadrian's Villa. They are exhibited in a room which makes reference to their original collocation in its architectural and decorative structure. Returning from a journey to Egypt, the Roman Emperor had brought back certain souvenirs with him and had them placed in reconstructions of their original buildings, complete with the statues that decorated them. The emperor's imagination was struck by the preparations underway at the time for the start of a new Sotic era, which was to have coincided with the date of July 19th in the year 139 AD. The beginning of the Nile's flooding was expected for that day, along with the rise of the star of the goddess Isidis Sotis, whom we see here dressed as Demeter, the Greek goddess of fertility and the harvest. The Alexandrine god Serapides also fired the emperor's imagination. That's why on a platform at the center of a long corridor representing in the reconstruction, the Valley of the Kings, the emperor had depicted the ritual ceremony of the awakening of the God accompanied by the sound of melodious instruments and by food offerings. This reawakening ritual was witnessed by the divinities attached to the cult of Osiris and Api, of which the god Serapides, as the name implies, was the synthesis. <laughs> 